A 30 minute video? That better have some really good. Micro Jig, maker of the gripper. Work safer, work smarter. Warning, warning, this is my second and final week of summer break, so I don't have a regular project video this week. I'll be back with a regular project next week. Instead, I thought it would be fun to take you around the house and update you on some of my past projects. I'm pretty sure this is the longest video I've ever posted on this channel, so it'll be interesting to see the reactions I get. I also wanna make an announcement that I'll be live on Periscope tomorrow, August 1st, sometime in the morning. I'm not sure win but if you already have Periscope you'll get a notification and I'll be showing you a lot of the projects that I forgot to include in this video and I'll be taking your questions about them and anything else you have. So with that let me get started on this video. I'm not going to show you the shop projects. There's too many of those and I'm not going to show you the craft room since I just did that last week. I've got Wyatt behind the camera just like he was on my very first video. Uh, this is the door leading outside of my shop. This is an old woodworking project. I didn't shoot a video of this one, this wall here. This was an ugly concrete retaining wall. And I just kind of skinned it, I guess, with some redwood strips. Uh, I didn't build this bench, but I keep it here because it's all falling apart because I want to reuse the wood for it and put one of my other benches down there. Over here, you'll probably remember the potting bench. The thing we don't use on the bench is this dry sink under here. I thought it was a good idea, but really when we want to pot something, we just kind of do it on the ground. Everybody's favorite project was the wheelbarrow planter. And you can really see how much that pallet wood has aged. This was all made out of pallet wood. Right now we've got succulents in it just because they're a lot easier to, to grow, especially in California where we don't get any rain. We have one of those really fancy swimming pools. This planter here was an experiment. I made this to see how well a project could hold up with absolutely no finish on it. There's no paint or finish or anything. So this is just uh, regular pine lumber and this whole planter is just filled all the way up here with dirt and it's blasted for a few years completely unprotected from the weather this is just a little end table also made out of pallet wood the interesting thing about this project is these nails how they've surfaced here i guess from water hitting it and it just kind of swells and pushes them up in fact that one you can see it just comes right out of there my adirondack chair i love the color on that and i love the way that paint is kind of weathered a little bit. If I was going to make this again, I would make this angle a little more shallow. So it, you sit in it and while it could also use a cushion in it, but it, it feels like it, it goes back just a little bit too far. Patio table. You can see how that's holding up. It's really weathered. These boards really need to be refinished. I think that if you really want to protect an outdoor project, just go with paint. Really, that's the only way you're gonna protect things. I think that's why we paint houses. Probably what I'm gonna do is repaint this eventually rather than try to refinish it. Remember the porch swing bird feeder? Oh, look, a little arm fell off of it. Look at this, this has been up here for, I think two weeks now and birds still have not found this bird feeder. The wind chimes were hanging here before I hung this up. The wind chimes we haven't used in a long time because they were actually getting really annoying, that sound. So I took a bungee cord and wrapped them up so they would stop making that sound when the wind blew. And that kind of defeats the purpose of having a wind chime, I suppose. But, so I took them down and put this up here. You might remember this Viking chair here. It's probably... Oh, it's still holding up pretty well. The paint seems to be doing its trick. This is just two pieces of wood together, together to make a little folding chair. And this was a this was a controversial project when I made this thing because there was a, somebody I forget who it was was didn't like the fact that I glued end grain on this. I wonder if it still opens. There we go. The thing I really liked about this project was the finish, this, you know, weathered look on it. 
It's really holding up really well. It's still really sturdy. When people say you can't glue end grain of wood, it's probably not completely true. Over here is our three-step planter. This is made with limited tools, wind spinner. It looks like it needs to be tightened up here. The one problem I always had with this wind spinner was getting an effective spinner up here, something that spins really easily. This, I ended up using a fishing, it was some sort of a hook for fishing. I don't, I don't fish, so I'm not really sure what it's called, a swivel hook or something. The main thing about this that I liked doing was making that rainbow effect where one color fades into the other. Here's another project that people thought would never hold up. These, there's two of them, one here and one down here. We have plants in there usually. This is, they're kind of like Lincoln logs, so these are all just half lap joints and, you know, just all joined together. The herb garden, again, we've put succulents in here just because we don't have to water them as much. This is a, another good project for limited tools. If you just have a jigsaw, or a circular saw, you can easily make this with just off the shelf lumber. And the sign up here, a little rustic sign. This is what I'm gonna put down where that other broken down bench goes. It's still holding up really well, but we never use it way over here. We never come to this part of the yard. Let's go out front. <laughs> I'm probably missing projects actually. I'll point it out if you miss it. Yeah, if you see anything. Ah, the infamous purple bench. And that's all made out of two by fours. Boardwalk. I made this a long time ago. This was another project made before I was shooting videos. It was stained and finished at one time, but again, I've kind of neglected it. For this, my deer skewer. That was one of those projects I made, but we didn't really use it all that often. You recognize that workbench, I use that all the time. I won't go over that. Up into the front of the house though, here's a project people do ask me about a lot. This doormat down here. It's been here ever since I made it and this is another project that could probably be refinished. Do any of you actually refinish old projects? Because I really don't. Once they're done, I'm pretty much done with them. Oh, right by the front door, you're probably recognize that. This is one of my favorite projects, these little drawers. This is made out of curly redwood. And Tim Sluter, viewer of the show from way back, sent me these shaker pegs. Over here is where we keep the keys. This was a all made out of pallet wood here. This is this is Wyatt's keys, the tail. <laughs> This is a, uh, it's like a whiteboard, except it's just plexiglass in there. So the idea being that you can keep up to date with family notes, which we don't use. We don't, it's just one of those things. It sounds like, hey, that's great. We'll write notes on there, but really who does that? You know, I've got a smartphone. Paper towel dispenser. Really like this design because this holds the aluminum foil, plastic wrap and then down here is the paper towel dispenser which just comes out here this has got a little spring loaded deal on one side and it fits up like that right above that this was one of my earliest projects on the channel this clock this tray was made out of an old crate this was a wine company that I think I designed all of this for them back when I was doing graphic design work. Here's a little serving tray here. This one is for chips and use like a ramp pin fits down in there. So you have chips and dip on two sides made out of two by fours. Another project that we really don't use. Spice rack. If you do a lot of cooking, I think it's important to have your spices out where you can reach them. I don't like to have, especially the ones that I use all the time, I don't like to have them inside of a pantry where I gotta go back and forth. I like them right here where they're handy. And what we did is we got all these little glass jars and then we printed out the name of everything on there. And we keep them in alphabetical order. I have another spice rack video 
that I made. I don't have the spice rack. I think that was one that I auctioned off for Make-A-Wish Foundation. And there's, hey, there's Make-A-Wish right there. I got this huge magnet that a viewer sent me. That was really cool. Three cactuses that are in this two pieces of wood with holes in it. People always ask me about the cutting board and I think this is, you can see how much use it gets. This literally gets used every day, almost every day. And I think I'm gonna make a separate video about cutting board care because I don't really do anything to it. All I do is I chop food on it and I rinse it off with detergent and and water and then I just put it back here to dry and that's it. You're supposed to reapply mineral oil to it like once a month or something. Well this has been at least two or three years probably and it is just just as good as ever. But I, I'm gonna make a separate little mirror mini on cutting board use and care. For instance, what I'll do on this one to freshen it up is just sand it down, sand down all this ingrain, and then I'll put some fresh mineral oil. How many of you remember the banana stand? This was all made out of bamboo. Why it was in that video? It was the mm. it was the the cleaning boy video. Yeah. We did we did a little uh, silent movie. We wanted to do a I thought it would be fun to do a silent movie. I really wanted to do something like Buster Keaton. We get a lot of use out of this. Every time we have bananas, we still hang them on here and it keeps them fresh. If you if you put bananas on the counter, they'll, they'll turn brown quicker. Cookbook stand. Again, this is another really useful project. And for those of you who haven't seen it, this is an older project also. You can see how it's really dirty right now. It has this adjustable slider on the back so you can angle of it, this little rod here is meant to hold the cookbook open because you know how this one's not doing it, but sometimes they close if it's a newer book. So you can put this in here and it holds it into place. Silverware drawer divider. This is actually version two. When I made this, I mentioned in the video that the first one I realized what I didn't like about it and I corrected those problems on this one. And to tell you the truth, I think I'm ready to build a third version to correct problems with this one. It seems like there's a lot of tools that we have that are just barely too long for these back spots. So we end up just tossing them in there like that. So I'd like to address that. I probably don't need this big space here for the knives and all of these measuring spoons, that's kind of ridiculous to use up that much space when really we only need one. Bookend, <laughs> I did that on a scroll saw and then it's brass, it's just a sheet of brass behind it. And there's my salad tongs, remember these? They're like, they're called hands or something, but these is made from hard maple. We use them all the time and I don't care for them, I don't, give them any care. I rinse them off really well, let them dry, and then I just toss them back in the drawer and that's it. Okay, into my office here. You probably see a lot of stuff. Here was an early one. I was, I had a video of things to do with CDs and so I just made this simple round board for this dimmer switch. A picture frame made out of exposed plywood edges and all the color, it looks like tie-dye is just food coloring. Food coloring mixed with water and put on there. I really like that effect. The charging station. This is another project I'd like to revisit because we've outgrown it. It was, I think it was a cool design and a lot of people have made this project, but we don't have a lot plugged into it right now. But we've got a lot more devices now than when we made this and it just becomes difficult to use. Plus my idea was when I made this that these would all stand up in here like that but in actual use we don't do that. We just kind of dump things in here. There's that little uh, dime, what was this called? The dime maze? Dime maze or something. It's a kind of like a three-dimensional maze in there that you put a dime in one side and you have to move it around and it comes out the other side. The writing desk. You can see I've got, here's all letters from viewers I haven't gone through yet, so I'll be getting to those pretty soon. This desk I built 
in 2002, I think. It's too big. You know, when I built it, we had, I think, three computers on here, desktops, but now we don't, we only use the one desktop. Usually we use tablets or laptops. I'm gonna build a smaller desk that goes along this wall. This is all made out of solid oak. And you can see I still have one of those really ancient TVs up there. <laughs> I still use it for listening to music, actually. Yeah, I listen to Sirius Satellite. This is the footstool with the handle on it. Like, I've made a lot of footstools with another one. These, like, how many? Four? I think four different ones, yeah. This is a dictionary stand that I think I'm also going to get rid of pretty soon because I don't use dictionaries. We've got Wikipedia and online dictionaries. So look! Rain stick. It's supposed to simulate the sound of rain. This is another video. I think I made this silent. I don't think I... I don't think I did any talking on it, but I used Somewhere Over the Rainbow by Izzy, the Hawaiian ukulele player. I think it got flagged. I'm not sure. I think it's still on. I think it's still up. Still on my channel. I'm not okay, really no. sure, but I don't know what to do with it. Maybe I should auction this off. Maybe that would be a good project because it just takes up space. And then this, like that. these, these are register covers. I made these for all over the house. They just drop down in. Those are solid oak. Here, this is our washing machine, washer and dryer. Here's the can dispenser. And I think that's it for in here. This was my Ikea knockoff. I thought it would be fun to try to copy. This is one, I, I think I want to auction this one off too. I really like the look of that. It holds up. It's for holding a bottle of wine. It'd be like a gift, a gift box. And this is an old one too. Any of you who go way back on my channel may remember this is, I made this using just hand tools because I had the power go out one day in my shop. And so I thought, well, let me just try and see if I can do something with just hand tools. And that's what I came up with. It really wasn't a lot of fun making a project with just hand tools. Here's the marshmallow crossbow. whistle. That was in one of my New Year's Eve projects. Here's the world's tiniest bandsaw box. It's actually not even a bandsaw box. I made this on a scroll saw. Train whistles. Quarto. There's all the quarto pieces. That's one I should probably auction that one off too because we never really use it. A uh, viewer of the show sent me this which was really fun. This was an aggravation game. New Year's Eve noisemaker. Who remembers the cowbell? This is the project that is the most viral video I have on my channel. Do you have any idea how many views I have of that one? It's like uh, probably about 12 million at this point. Yeah, that was the, I actually have t-shirts made up now of that nail through the wood trick. That has been the project that keeps on giving. And I actually had another one. Here's another version of it I made. My pink flamingo. Imagine that there's a rubber band going through there. So you try to hook this on the rubber band and then you pull it out and it pulls back like that. And the idea is that you give it to people as a prank and try to get them to hook that rubber band but they never can because it's not long enough to hook it. So the whole trick is really you just squeeze this tight and it looks like it's pulled back. Here's a loud whistle. This is one you can make out of a dowel and you just cut a little notch in it. This is all made out of pallet wood. It was just up on the wall here. I took it down for some reason or another. There's another stool. Wow, I've got so many stools. This was uh, also a real popular project. This just folds in. Wyatt's music area. And another stool, but this isn't a step stool. This is just a bar stool that was, I liked this because it's extra thick. Usually the stools are, have that one layer of wood. But he uses this to play guitar on. You might remember the cajon. And this one's adjustable, so you can either, you can take the snare off of it if you want. And this was a, uh, this is a, what do you call these? I forget. Stomp box. Stomp box. This was my own in version of a stomp box that has little jingles. 
That's for uh, like busking. People on the street, sometimes you'll see them with a stomp box. Usually they don't have those jingles on there, but I made this one so that you can just take them off and then makes that stomp. Plus, this one has a piezo transducer. transducer on there so you can hook it into an amplifier. Or anything else with a quarter inch audio jack. Yeah. Here's a slip drum. This is called a bongo cajon. So you can see it has two different sizes here. I think you can hold it like this too. It's a shadow box. And so we have this ancient Greek vase in there. An actual ancient Greek vase. <laughs> yeah. And this is one of those things that we just never turn that light on, you know. It's cool, it looks cool, but... And the light, by the way, that light in there, just to save you from having to watch the video, is one of those little button lights that you just press down on and it lights up, so I've got it through a little hole in the top. Five board bench. And we use it to just to set these plants on. Here's a little corner planter. Also, it looks like... It only has one plant on it right now. Well, what happened to the others? Maybe they all died. Probably. Yeah. Corridor game. And, oh, here's an early plant. I think I made this before I was making videos. No, I think you made a video about it. Did I? Yeah. This is Quiddler, it's a card game. So I made this box that has a little divider so it holds both halves of the deck and then fits together like that. This is technique for making this little lip around here is really one of my favorite techniques. I guess you have to see the video to see how that's done. It's really pretty easy to do that. Here's a little trivet. This is like a hot plate. I made this on a live show. Remember when we did the live? Uh, I actually made a different one on the live show. Oh, I made show. a different one. That's right. I had a, a week of trivets or something. I had, I had yeah, three you had three trivets. different ones. And then I did a live show. It was when YouTube first started their live streaming so I thought well I gotta try this out and so I did it and it's really hard to do those live streaming shows because I didn't really know I thought I was going to make this project and I did I made the whole project live and then I took questions and answers this is a sliding dovetail in here and it's got a magnet here just to keep the lid shut this is for holding a tablet or I made this specifically for a Kindle HD for my wife no not a, kin a Kindle fire Kindle fire that's right. the first and one and so the idea here is that you can stand it up in here and then to adjust the angle, let me see if I can do this sitting right here. So you'd sit the Kindle in here and then you can adjust its angle just by adjusting this lid. All of the furniture in this living room, we wanted to go with a mid-century modern look to it, which I really like. So the wood choice on everything is cherry. This is the cherry coffee table. One thing interesting about the cherry is, I mean, I'll see if I can find a picture of what this looked like when I finished it. Compared to the way it looks now, that cherry, how much it darkens up over time. And I think that's really one of the reasons I like cherry so much. There's a cherry lamp right there, this table. I like it where it has this sapwood running through it. And this is just a conduit and it looks like the that's a little wobbly and then this little end table over here also made of cherry plywood and then solid cherry edging and then the it's got the steel conduit there's actually three you probably can't see it from there just a little design element and then the tapered legs and of course the <laughs> Pallet coasters made out of pallet wood. It's a knitting box. Yeah. Knitting box. All of her knitting junk and then this little drawer in there. I like this because it has the finger joint on it. And you can see the finger joints all the way up. But this, these two, these are kind of like hidden finger joints. What is this called? The sofa table, I think? Sofa table. It slides like in like this. So you've got, and this is also made out of cherry. This is one of my more popular designs. A lot of people have made it. This is a piece I made before I was making videos. This, cause this is, oh, I would have done it out of cherry if I was doing it now, it's kind of messy. But this is all big drawers filled with DVDs, DVDs which we don't ever watch anymore. Everything's streaming. There's the bookcase made out of a single sheet of plywood. I had 
nothing but trouble on the finish on that. I was using this combination polyurethane and stain and it, it didn't work out. So I ended up painting the whole project. But the color turned out really nice and I like, I like the way it looks. Look, the hands have all fallen off of it. They probably yeah. fell off of here at one time. Yeah. Oh, it's upside down. Like this. this was the one that I, I copied. I copied the little whisper on that one. Unintentionally. Yeah. A lot of people did thought I did I copied him. I didn't even know. It was really, it was just a coincidence. He made one that looked almost exactly like that before I made that one. Just a little uh, keepsake box. With nothing in it. Nothing in it. But I, I just like the look of, it looks like a book. There's an oldie. That's really delicate. It's kind of a heart within a heart and it's got a picture. It's on both sides? Yeah. yeah. That's a picture of Wyatt hamming it up. Here's my second viral video. The cube in a cube project. I made this because uh, specifically I came up with this design because I wanted a design that everybody could make. It's easy to cut out but looked really cool and I just think that's a really cool design. Wow, I got all kinds of stuff down here. Here's a little puzzle. You try to take these, well, anyway, these three pieces come apart. I don't remember how it works now. Oh, the credenza. Real proud of this piece. Again, you can see how dark that cherry has become over time. And Jetson's wall clock. Googie. Yeah, Googie style. I really like this style. The cat tree. She is starting to use it now. She likes this level the most. Oh yeah, this. This was a, another idea. The hard part about this project was finding baskets. Wow, I didn't know baskets were so expensive. But I made this out of, again, out of cherry. And it's just held together with, uh, well, I guess you call that a lap joint. Just a dado on there. And then I've got pins going through to hold it together. So just so like a, it's kind of like an end table, I suppose. I'm not sure what you call it. I don't think this was a very popular project. No. I don't think people cared much for that. Picture. Here's a picture frame tablet stand. So you put a picture in there, but it also works as a tablet. And we never use it. That's why it's behind our TV. Yeah, maybe I should, maybe that's another, I should just, what I should do is just go through and auction off some of this stuff. Look at that way too much stuff. The trendy bendy photo stand, which was just this bent wood and then the photos slide down in there. All right, in the bathroom, there's the, the uh, rustic cabinet. I, I like that a lot. And then the toilet paper and reading center with John and Luke. They should make another appearance. John and Lou. Uh, won't show you the craft room. Remember this lamp I made? This was out of really rare, um, I forget what the name of that wood Isn't is. Isn't it like Cory, Cory. Cory. Mm -hmm. From Australia, it's an ancient wood. And a, a guy sent that to me and a lot of people said this looked like a trash can and I, I got really self-conscious about it, but I like it. I, I really like it a lot because it's, it's real dim and it, it makes for a nice light in the bedroom. Here's another one of those trendy bendy photo stands right here. So the photos just slide in right like that. And then you'll remember the big huge wall shelf. It had the, uh, the, the manometer. With the manometer, the manometer on there. <laughs> Um, this is probably worth pointing out. This is a picture frame. This is all made out of MDF, and this is a special spray paint you can get that makes it look like stone or granite, something like that. Oh, I think it's really cool. This palette frame for holding earrings. My wife came to me with the design. She liked it. She saw it on Pinterest or something, asked me if I could make it, so I did. And as a result, so many people said, that's the ugliest thing I've ever seen. Pallet wood with wallpaper on it, and, and also again one of the. It's a pro, anytime you make a project out of pallet wood, or if it's called rustic, there's a certain group of people who just have to tell you how much they hate anything rustic. And I heard from them. Here's another one of those bandsaw boxes. I think I made this one for the video. Oh, the two end tables or nightstands, I guess these are. Those are made out of cherry and maple, and they've each got a drawer. Oh, look. 
this was a miniature chair design I did for the Marin County Fair. And this was the most difficult bit of angles I've ever done. This is all walnut and oh my gosh, just to figure out the angles on that. With my old table saw that was all wonky and everything, but I still managed to do it and I won. Best in show. Best in show on that project. Here's the flower container. This is a rustic little, it was a birthday present. Uh, and then yeah. I spray painted, yeah. And it, it's all made with pallet wood with rusty nails. I had to make the nails rusty myself, which was kind of fun. That's another video I think that got flagged because of the music. Happy birthday, happy Don't birthday. sing it, this video will get flagged. Sorry. It was by Altered Images, it was an 80s band. I really liked the song, but that was back when anybody could post anything on YouTube and you didn't really worry too much about getting flagged. I made these doors when we first moved into this place. I just thought it needed something to break up all of the white walls. I think these are the only walls in the house that are white. They're not painted some sort of a bright color. <laughs> Well, there you have it. That was, I'm kind of exhausted now, aren't you? How many of you fell asleep? Thank you all for taking the time to watch this rather unusual episode of Woodworking for Mere Mortals. I'll be back next week with a regular project video. And don't forget, I'll be live on Periscope tomorrow showing you more projects and taking your questions. Visit the Woodworking for Mere Mortals website at formeremortals.net where you can post pictures of your own projects and download tons of free woodworking plans. And if you haven't already done so, like the Woodworking for Mere Mortals Facebook page and you can stay up to date on all things mere mortals. Thanks again everybody. I, I hope you're having a casual summer. I'll see you next week.